How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over boiling point elevation and freezing point lowering and we're going to use these colligative property formulas here uh, in order to accomplish those. Uh, before I jumped into the first problem I just wanted to go over really quick the way that I remember both of these. Uh, I just like to think about salt and water uh, and why that accomplishes both of these two things. So essentially when a lot of people cook uh, pasta they'll add salt to the water and uh, I've heard people say that they think it makes the water boil faster but theoretically it should actually make it take longer to boil um, but what it does is the boiling point is increased so instead of boiling at 100 degrees celsius it'll maybe boil like theoretically at like 101 or 102 uh, and the increase in, in boiling point causes the sometimes the the pasta to get less sticky and it's kind of like a desired effect that that has um, so that's that's one way but then on the other end of the spectrum freezing point lowering um, in the winter time when they salt the roads uh, that obviously the salt is used to to help dissolve the the snow and to, to dry it up but the reason that happens is because the freezing point of water is lowered. So theoretically, it would have to be cooled. The, it would have to be much colder outside uh, for for the same snow to be remaining frozen or to 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 start to freeze. So theoretically, salting your road would not work in in an environment that is way way colder than salt has the capacity to decrease the the freezing point. But anyway, um, we'll just jump into the first problem here. Um, that is going to be. All right, so what is the boiling point of a solution formed by dissolving 26 grams of sucrose or table sugar and 170 grams of water? So what we're gonna start with here is we're gonna use this formula. Basically, we're trying to find the molarity um, kg solvent. And um, up top we have mass over molar mass and then all of that is going to be over the kg of solvent. So this is going to give us our moles and then we're just going to do it that way. So first off, let's just start plugging in. What, what do we have and what do we need? Um, so we were given the mass. We have 26 grams of sucrose over what we have is our molar mass of sucrose. So that's going to be 342.3 grams. And this divided by kilograms of solvent. So what do we have? We have 100, um, 170 grams of water. So we're just gonna convert that. Uh, one, two, three, we're gonna have um, 0 0.170 kg of water. And then we're just gonna do that math out. So 26 divided by 342.3, all that divided by 170, we're going to get 0 0.4468 m and that is the molarity of our solution so from there uh, we're going to now apply one of these so we can do um, that'll be all right so in this one we can start going across these are the constants so um, for for water uh, KB and KF um, and we can apply them in this formula here uh, we're just taking the molarity so what we got from this pre previous equ equation here 0 0.4468 molar and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.52 and I like to always write my units just so you can make sure that you know things things worked out right and you have the right decimal points. So here we have Celsius over molarity and here we have molarity. So top and bottom, we're gonna cancel that out. We're gonna be left with just a temperature, which is exactly what we want because we're calculating for a temperature. And in this case, what we'll get is 0 0.232 degrees Celsius. And um, a lot of times, like I like to say, always look back to the question. Once you get what you think might be a final answer, look back. So what is the boiling point of a solution formed by the dissolving? So what we found here is um, the change in the boiling point. So from there, what we can do is we can take this change and just add it. So we have, I'll do it in the equation form just, just for the sake of completeness, plus delta Tb is going to equal 100 degrees Celsius. The freezing, or the, I'm sorry, the boiling point of water 
plus 0 0.2, 0 0.232 degrees Celsius. We're going to get 100.232 degrees Celsius. So I try to use like a pretty, you know, like common, like a pretty common example. You could do this in your home, but basically if you add 26 grams of sugar to this much water, you're going to increase the boiling point that much. That, that's essentially what we just figured out. So, okay, we'll just jump right into the next problem here. I'll scoot this stuff down. There we go. All right. So what is the boiling point um, of 0 0.5 liters of water, uh, which has had 42 grams of NaCl added to it? And again, we, we got the density of water right here. All right, so I'll just scoot that up. So we're looking for the boiling point of 0.5 liters of water uh, with 40, 42 grams of salt in it. Um, so what we're going to do first is, just like the last problem, try to figure out what the molarity is going to be. We're going to have the moles of solute per kg of solvent. Um, so what we can do is we have, for the moles of solute, uh, four, uh, I'm sorry, 42 grams of NaCl times we get one mole per 58.44 grams. We're just going to divide 42 by 58.44 and there we're going to get 0 0.719 moles of salt in ACL. Um, now we're going to go for the kg of solvent. We start with the 0 0.5 liters of water and we're going to go from there uh, per one liter, we're going to have 1,000 ml. And then, like we did in a previous video here, we're, we're going to apply the density of water to this in order to figure out um, our kg. So we're going to have one, uh, for, so for one ml, we have one ml per one gram. And then um, one kg per 1,000 grams, and then from there, we're going to get our answer. And we'll be left with 0 0.5 uh, kg of water. So now we got our, um, both of the, the variables we need to figure out the molarity of the solution, so we'll just do that. Um, we're gonna get 0 0.719 over the kg of solvent, which was 0 0.5 kg. And we get 1.438 molar. So that's the molarity of the solution. So now we can use that and plug that back into the collative property formula. So I'll scoot, scoot these down a little bit. Um, we have here um, delta T, B is equal to M times KB, uh, which we'll say is 1.438 molar uh, multiplied by 0 0.52 degrees C over M. And again, our molar will cancel and we'll be left with just the temperature, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so we got 0. 74776. Um, we'll make that a little bit better looking. Um, we'll say that is 0 0.748. And um, so from there, we're going to take, and that should be degrees Celsius. Again, now what's it asking for? What is the boiling point? So it's not how much is the change. If it asks you how much does the boiling point increase as a result of adding 42 grams of salt, uh, that would be your final answer, but it's not. So we're going to plug it right back into this next formula. And again, this, this step is, you know, if you're working with water, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can just add it, but we'll do it just. So we have 100 degrees Celsius plus 0 0.748 degrees Celsius is going to be 100.748 degrees Celsius. 
So that is the boiling point. So this is kind of like the, the example I talked about in the beginning there. Um, say you're trying to cook pasta, you want to add a little salt. Uh, so the boiling point is higher so that the pasta is not going to get sticky. So that's, that's uh, you know, kind of the example there. So now we'll jump into the next one. Um, there. All right. Okay, so what is the freezing point of a solution formed by dissolving 35 grams of salt in 100 grams of water or one liter? Um, so this solution's sal like salinity is going to be 3.5%. This is just, I put this as a fun fact here, um, which is approximately seawater. So that's just something you can keep in mind. Basically, we're going to find out um, what is the freezing point of seawater theoretically. We're going to start with our uh, 35 grams of NaCl. And we'll get that into moles, 58.44. Okay, so we'll be left with 0 0.5989 moles of NaCl. And from there, we can convert the, uh, we have 1,000 grams of H2O, um, and that's gonna equal one kilogram of H2O. So that worked out pretty conveniently. We just move over the decimal point, do that uh, metric conversion there. Um, and then we can get the molarity of the solution. Molarity is going to equal 0 0.5989 um, moles of NaCl over just one <laughs> kg of solvent. And then oh, I shouldn't have even had to calculate that. 5989 moles of Na. I'm sorry, so that should be 5989 molar. So that's the, mol uh, the molarity of this solution. So now we're going to bring that down. Um, our freezing point is going to be the molar, or the, the change in freezing point rather times the KF, which we have right there. So now we're just gonna plug that in, 0 0.5989 molar times our 1.86 degrees Celsius per molar. And what do we get there? One point one one four degrees Celsius, um, and then in this case, we'll just do, we'll plug it into the freezing point of this solution of seawater is going to be zero degrees Celsius minus one point one one four degrees Celsius. It's going to equal negative one point one one four degrees Celsius. So as you can see, the, the freezing point of salt water is not that much lower. I, it's going to be lower than this because in, in actual seawater, um, you're going to have a whole bunch of other things that are in the water that contribute to it being uh, of even lower uh, freezing point than this. But the, basically, the, the answer is that freezing uh, seawater does freeze, and it doesn't take that much lower of a pressure. The reason the ocean doesn't freeze is, is for a whole bunch of other reasons. Um, so now we'll jump into the last problem here. Okay, what is the freezing point of, sorry, what is the freezing point of 25 cubic centimeters uh, of eth ethylene glycol, um, which there's the density, uh, in 75 grams of water? And then so I've, ethylene glycol is something that's used in, uh, in making polyester, but it's also used in making antifreeze. So that's why it's kind of a, a convenient, or it's, it's a significant example for, for freezing point uh, lowering. So here we have, uh, we'll start it off with, um, I just like to kind of get my, my units in line, you know, sometimes earlier. This is kind of like a, uh, just like a little roadmap, so to speak. 
But basically, if we're trying to get from volume to mass, we're going to use density. From mass to moles, we're going to use the molar mass. Um, here we have 25.0 CM3 of ethylene glycol. I'll just write it like that. 1.12 grams. It's right there in the density. They give it to us in cubic uh, centimeters. So we can use it um, right there per 1 CM3 times one mole and then the the uh, molar mass of ethylene glycol is 62.04 grams and then from there what do we get okay. 0 0.45 moles of all right uh, uh, ethylene glycol so now we got our moles um, we'll figure out what we can do from there Molarity is going to equal your mole of solute over the kg of solvent, which is going to be, we figured out our moles are 0 0.45 mole. And then our solvent, we have 75 grams, um, which we can convert from there. We're going to use, um, that's going to be 0 0.075. Kilograms of water, and then we'll just solve for that. Wow, that worked out really convenient. It's exactly six. Um, okay, so from there, we're just going to plug that into the formula like we did for the previous problems. The change in freezing point is going to be the m times the kf, which we have the m is going to be six. Uh, times 1.86 degrees Celsius over molar. And so again, our moles are, or our, I'm sorry, our molarity is going to cancel out here and we'll be left with the temperature, which is great. Um, get 11.16. And then the freezing point equals again the T of F minus change in F equals zero degrees. And I'm, I'm going through this because it won't always be zero degrees. A lot of times you'll, you'll be working with other like solutions. Um, so this just happens to be kind of be convenient, but I think it's, it's a good way to remember it. And then we're just going to have our freezing point is going to equal negative 11.16 degrees Celsius. And that's the answer. So as you can see in comparison, like the ratios aren't exact, but the the freezing point is lowered way more with antifreeze or ethylene glycol than it was with, with adding salt. So as you can probably imagine, it would also increase the uh, boiling point even more. So yeah, that is, uh, that is elevation of boiling point and freezing point lowering. Hopefully this helps someone.